go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. the Holy Spirit that shines light onto the Word of God, the table of shoe bread. Listen, that gets you to the next station, which is, notice this, the altar of incense. Here we go. As the smoke rose, that brother set me up nicely, didn't he? As the smoke rose from the altar of incense, listen, it would fill that entire place, which is symbolic of what we just did a few minutes ago. The, the smoke as it filled the place. Here's what the smoke represents. The smoke represented, hear me, praise, worship, prayer, and intercession. Praise, worship, prayer, and intercession. Are you with me? And after praise, worship, prayer, and intercession, listen to me. The last station that you would enter into was the Ark of the Covenant. Here's what it represents, those of you taking notes. The Ark of the Covenant represents the manifest or show enough presence of the living God. Now you say God is everywhere. I understand that God is everywhere at once. That speaks of the omnipresence of God. But when we speak of the altar, I mean, excuse me, the Ark of the Covenant, it is not speaking of the omnipresence of God, God being everywhere at once, but it speaks of the manifest presence of God. The presence that shows up when we touch and agree in his name. The presence that shows up and heals those who are sick in their bodies after the doctor's given up on them. The presence that shows shows up when pastor went down to the jail and began to minister to Todd Bridges. The presence that snatches the taste of alcohol out of your mouth, that snatches the appetite for drugs off of you. The show enough presence of God. I, I, I'm trying to teach this thing because I'm only halfway through. This only the second layer. We have four layers tonight. But can you turn to your neighbor and say, thank God for pre his presence. Because it was not just a convincing argument that won me over, but it was the presence of the God that took me from where I am, where he called me to be. It was the presence of God that changed my direction. It was the presence of God that went beyond cerebral knowledge and snatched me out of darkness and pulled me into the marvelous light. Look at somebody, give them a high five real quick. So thank God for the presence. Now notice this. Can we peel back another layer real quick? All right, so the first layer then is what each one of these stations represented in the Old Testament. The next layer is biblical insight or New Testament realities as it relates to each one of these stations. Now, I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, Pastor, you're going to get to your frustration and what this has to do with the tabernacle. I didn't know yet. I told you I'm taking you on a journey. God didn't reveal it to me yet. That was only layer number one. When I got to layer number one, I was still confused. God said, look through it again. I looked through it again. And I got to layer number two, and I was confused. But, but, but I didn't realize that the goal was to take me somewhere. I looked at it again, and I realized as I looked at the tabernacle again, layer number three, hold your nose. We're going a little bit deeper. Layer number three is, notice this where God revealed my frustration. I began to look at the tabernacle in each one of these stations. And I, I discovered my frustration. That's what the Holy Spirit will do. He took me to Moses. But Moses He's talking to Moses about tents and smoke and materials. The stuff in the Bible, y'all skip over. It's just me. When they start detailing, I want you to take a ring and a curtain rod, gopher wood and all that stuff. You, you guys skip over that, but you miss the revelation because you read too fast. He, he, he peeled back a third layer and he showed me what my frustration is. He gave me insight, illumination, and revelation. And I no longer, third layer, saw the tabernacle as it was. But God transported me, Bishop, into the tabernacle. Not only did he transport me into the tabernacle, I promise you I'm going to make sense in a minute, but I begin to see 
as I looked at all of the stations of the tabernacle. God, I feel there's a revelation coming and there's an impartation before we leave this place tonight. You better not leave this place before you receive your impartation. God showed me each one of these layers. And he showed me each one of my friends who had been frustrated with where they were through the tabernacle. The goal was movement. Let me see if I can help you. Layer number three. When I come to the altar, I come through salvation, which grants me access to every other spiritual station that God has for me. And when I come through salvation, it gives me a heart for purification and holiness. God, I wish I had a few more people walking with me on that one. If there's a true salvation experience, you can't stay the way that you are. Even if you decided to stay the way that you are. The Bible says that God disciplines those he loves. If there's a true salvation experience, even if you're still trying to tear the club up, God will step in and let somebody shoot up the club. God, I feel this in here. To drive you out of the behaviors and lifestyles you've been in because his hand is on you. And he says, I can let everybody else act a fool, but my sons and my daughters are disciplined because I'm conforming them on a daily basis into the image of Christ. Some days they want to be conformed, some days they don't want to be conformed. But thank God, even the days when I didn't want to be conformed, God, I feel this. You, I was planning to teach, but you ought to make your way down to the organ. I, 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 even the days I didn't want to change. Thank God he stepped in and whooped my behind back into righteousness because he didn't just want me to be saved, but he wanted me to live up to the salvation that I've already received. He wants me to look like him. I don't have time to work that like I want to, but if I did, I would work that like a chicken wing until I got down to the marrow. But give somebody a high five real quick and tell them, he, thank God he didn't leave me like I was. I cried about it. I was frustrated about it. But thank God he's conforming me into the image of his son. Y'all sit down. I, I, I don't want to preach that. I just want to talk to you. But you're pushing something out of me right now. I don't know. Notice this. Say progression. So he goes then from the altar to the laver. Notice the next station. As we come into, listen, the faith, we, the next station that we run into is that of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit then that we receive and the Holy Spirit is not just meant to make us shout. The Holy Spirit is not just meant to make us high five our neighbor. I praise God for a good dance like anybody else because I get it in. We get it in Antioch Pastor just like you. We get it in. I'm not with the folks that say you know we shouldn't be emotional. No we should be emotional. If you won the lottery immediately tomorrow you would not be cool, calm, and collected when you consider how broke you were the day before. If you consider how your life changed from one day to the other, you trying to comprehend how good that is to you, you would lose your mind and flip your lid because you would not be able to comprehend the goodness from broke to rich all in one day. You would be emotional too. When I consider how God changed my life, I, I get emotional. Yes, yes I do. I, I'm cerebral. I believe in the word of God. I'm prophetic in nature. But, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I get, I get, I get, I get emotional. So sit down, sit down. So, so, notice this. It, notice the progression. I'm saved, born into the body of Christ. I, I'm cleansed. Not only am I cleansed, and, and he makes me, conforms me into his image. I receive the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that's not just to make me shout, but it's the Holy Spirit. Notice this. It is to give me light and illumination onto the word of God. So that with clarity of insight, I now am able to receive or to see the word of God with revelation. Now notice this. It is at the table of shoe bread that I learn the basics of encounter 
encountering God, as I study the word, notice this. I watch patterns of people that have encountered God, who have walked with God, who have communed with God. Because I need understanding as it relates to my connection with God. That's why in the New Testament, Jesus said, those who worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. It is the truth that he is. He was talking to a Samaritan woman. He said, it is not either or. We're not going to worship like you Samaritans, and we're not going to worship like the Jews. What God is looking for is a blend of both of those realities. Because the Samaritans, he says, worship what they do not know. In other words, they're having an experiential encounter with the divine, but don't intelligently understand what's happening as they're having a spiritual or supernatural encounter with the divine. But we Jews are not having an experiential encounter. We have the customs. We have the proper names of God. We know the proper stations and how you should approach the presence of God, but we're not having an experiential encounter. Jesus said the time is coming. Here comes the radio spirit again. Well, we won't do it like the Jews. We won't do it like the Samaritans. But we're going to do both of them. Are you with me? We're going to bring an experiential encounter. But when we're having an experiential encounter and we're being touched supernaturally by God, we are not ignorant about what we're being touched by. We understand how we are touching God because we have the word of God. Now notice this. It is the word of God that gives us, watch the progression, say progression. It is the word of God. I promise you it's going to make sense in a minute. It is the word of God that teaches us the basics in interacting with God so that we now get to the altar of incense where it is not just an observation of how people have encountered God, but now we ourselves begin to encounter God. Listen, through praise, worship, prayer, and intercession. Listen to me, which will always take us to the next station which is going into the manifest presence of God. I saw my frustration. My frustration was that God meant for us to go from one station to the next to progress from salvation all the way to an intimate encounter with God. But my frustration was me and my buddies, me and my friends, our moves were all getting stuck at one station. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. We were getting stuck. Our denominations were stuck at one station. And there was something in us. The Holy Spirit was saying there's more than you've been encountering. The Holy Spirit was telling us that there's more to this picture than what we've been limited to. I know people that built books around one station. I know people that built movements around one station. But the kingdom of heaven is forcefully advancing. In other words, there is a progression in the kingdom of heaven. And whenever the people of God get stuck at one station, the Holy Spirit will create a holy frustration in the spirit. God, I feel, I don't know who I'm talking to, but there's somebody that's felt a holy frustration in your spirit because God wants to take you from where you are, from where you've been, into where he's called you to be. Look at your neighbor real quick, tell him don't get stuck at the station. Yes, I feel it. Listen, listen, listen. There were my friends, and I can say it because I got Baptist roots. My Baptist friends, they were circling the altar. They made everything about salvation. Get them saved, get them saved, get them saved, get them saved, get them saved. Salvation, salvation, salvation. You're saved to save. Save to save. Save, save, save. Save, save, save. Save, save, save. Now there's a purpose for salvation. But how many know that salvation is just the front door? I'm talking to some kingdom people that say I'm moving beyond just my salvation. I praise God for my fire insurance. But that was just the door to get me into the kingdom. Now that you've walked into the door, you may as well explore the rest of the house and go find what God has for you. You have keys not only to the front door, but he says, I've given you the keys of the kingdom. Whatsoever things you bind on earth are bound in heaven. Whatsoever things you loose on earth are loosed in heaven. He said, I have rooms for you to explore. Salvation is just the front door. Now notice this. I had my friends who were stuck <laughs> at the laver. 
Gotta get holy, gotta get holy, gotta get holy, gotta get holy, gotta get right, 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 gotta get holy, gotta get right. People started getting holy though, and they were stuck at the station, and they had to start creating things make you holier, holier, hold on, hold on. And so it didn't become about Jesus anymore. It's about becoming more holy. Dirty, clean, get clean, get clean. What, what happens when you just come out of the shower? What happens when you're walking in righteousness with him? Here's what happens when you think that that's the only station and you're already walking in righteousness, the dresses just get longer. God, I feel this. And the legalism <laughs> and the rules just start to come in. You can't, Christians shouldn't go to the movies. Now, I hope I'm not stepping on any toes. I don't think that's Bishop's, uh, Bishop's message. Uh, yeah, yeah, you move, man. Yes, right, that's right. But Christians shouldn't go to the movies. Christians, from time to time, talking to married folks now. I don't want to listen to, I love them, but I don't want to listen to John P. Key. When I'm with my lady. Close your ears, singles, and, and we're doing merry things. I ain't get any amen, Lord, Lord, the spirit of freedom, Lord, release them now in the name. The rules began to increase because they were circling the station. And I had my friends who simply circled the Holy Ghost station. So they focused on Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. They never asked the purpose of the Holy Ghost. They never asked the assignment of the Holy Ghost. And they begin to explore what the Holy Ghost was called. It's Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. And what they did is, like what Paul warned the first Corinthian church about when he came to address them, they came out of paganism and they were so enamored by the experiential encounter with the Holy Spirit that they never asked what the purpose of the Holy Spirit was for. So they just started freaky manifestations. They, they, they begin to call epilepsy the divine disease because they believed that if you were close to the pagan deity, you would shake. Are you with me? So when they came into the church and saw the filling of the Holy Spirit, they begin to merge a little of their paganism with the move of the Holy Spirit and they just became focused on the experiential encounter of the Holy Spirit without really asking the question, what is the Holy Spirit called to move us into? Are you with me? He has not called, he's not given us the Holy Spirit just for a manifestation. He's giving us the Holy Spirit for life, for living, and to move us forward is the Holy Spirit that gives light into illumination into the Word of God. Now notice this, I had my friends that circled the table of shoe bread. These are the, it doesn't take all that, folks. You remember that movement? You know, you were criticized if you shouted in church, God forbid the pastor raise his voice. Because we're to live our life simply on the principles of God. Are you with me? And so my friends, if, if, if you got too emotional, if it's too much Holy Ghost, then they go, oh, no, 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 we don't allow that here because, because we build our life on the principles of the word of God. My friends were stuck at the altar of incense. They never asked the purpose. What is the purpose of our praise, worship, prayer, and recession? They just took it up and up and up and up to explode. So the fireworks came in the church. Now we're cutting edge. Church, we use multimedia, all that stuff in our services. Lights, camera, action, all that. My friends, try to keep that encounter, take it higher and higher and higher. Start employing gimmicks. And there were the folks just said, just, we just want to get into his presence. Not realizing that we're trying to take each one of these things up as opposed to understanding them so that we can go in. Look at your neighbor tell him it's a progression. Now that's my frustration. I answered that. Now here is, you ready for the next layer? All right, here we go. We're going to the deep end of the pool. Hold your nose. We're going deeper. Here it is. Layer number one was the Old Testament reality. Layer number two was the biblical symbolism for New Testament Christians. Layer number three was God revealing my frustration, and that is that he called us to go in, not just take one of those up and camp at the station. 
I'm not here to abuse your denomination, but what I'm saying is God pulled the people of God beyond where they were, to where he called them or what he wanted them to be. You ready for this? This is the next layer. Now, this is book material here. You ready for it? Next layer. Where layer is this? Number four? All right, good. Layer number four. I promise you don't want to miss this. As I looked at it again, I realized now, after God showed me my frustration, as I looked at this pattern, this pattern down to every detail outlined the moves of God in the Western world over the course of the last 300 years. The first and second great awakening. Major thrust was salvation. Simply a harvest of souls as they would stand and declare the word of God. There was a harvest of souls. People were crying out to be saved. God poured his spirit out on the message of salvation as the message of salvation is always potent. There are times marked in history. First, second, great awakenings. People begin to see a need for Jesus. As people's mouth was open, the end goal was that people were drawn to him for salvation. Ready for it? Next layer. I normally have a visual, so you have to use your imagination with me, but you're a people with insight, so follow me. Not long after the Second Great Awakening, in the mid to late 1800s, there was a movement that began to emerge. There were Methodist revivals. And after they gathered together and sought the face of God, these Methodist revivals, one of the things that happened, they began to cry out for holiness. They said, we've been saved. We know we're going to heaven, but we don't want to live like hell while we're here. They began to cry out for holiness, holiness, holiness. It was out of the Methodist revivals, these tent meetings, that the holiness movement, as we understand it, was birthed. Notice this. The first thing was the first and second great awakenings. But as time goes on to the 1800s, the mid-1800s, I promise you, don't go to sleep on this one. The 1800s to the late 1800s were the Methodist revivals where they began to cry out to the living God for holiness. The lather. They became ceremonially clean. They began to repent to the Lord like never before and change their ways. The lather holiness. Not far from where we're standing right now. 1906. 1907. Notice the progression. Man by the name of William J. Seymour gathered, began to have meetings. They became known as the Azusa Street Revival. Y'all speaking in tongues tonight because of what happened not far from here at the Azusa Street Revival. God began to pour his spirit out like never before. He began to restore the move of the Holy Spirit. It began to be persecuted on one hand, recognized on the other hand, but no one could doubt that there was an emphasis back on the Holy Spirit of the living God. People began to cry out for the Holy Spirit like never before. 1906 candlesticks. About the mid-1900s, we begin to move into what we call, listen, precept ministry. Precept ministry was the preacher didn't just tell you what he wanted you to know anymore and you took notes or you sat there, but people began to bring their Bibles to church. They began to research for themselves. They began to teach principles out of the Word of God. And while there always was teaching out of the Word of God, it was not about this great orator who, listen, to move you, but it was someone who was to, would stand before you to teach you the Word of God line upon line, precept upon precept. And while that's been happening since the days of Jesus, there was a unique outpouring of God as it relates to that specifically churches begin to rise up the word churches and they begin to celebrate the word of God and remember this pastors begin to call them Jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other because Jesus is the way
Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I want you to get a copy of my new book, The Revelation of Jesus' Name, just for your love gift this month of helping me take apostolic television around the world. This is a must-read book. Just some of the chapters I want to share with you is the history of baptism. I want to share that with you. Baptism without repentance, the purpose of baptism, and is baptism really necessary? What if you've already been baptized? If you would like to get those questions answered in your life, get my new book, The Revelation of Jesus' Name, just for supporting us and helping us take apostolic television around the world. Get your monthly love gift of the book, The Revelation of Jesus' Name, for a love gift of $10 or more to help us continue to turn the world upside down. Get yours today. Praise the Lord, this is Bishop Ernest Johnson inviting you to come to a miracle move of God this Sunday morning at the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. We're located at 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Come on out if you need healing, you need deliverance, you need to be saved, you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost. I want to invite you to come on out to the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church. 25100 South Normandy Avenue in Harbor City, California. Join us this Sunday morning at 11 a.m. And Bible study is Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. Come on out and we'll see you there. Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. And for over 30 years, I've preached about it. I've talked about it. I've testified about it. But now I've got it available on DVD. That's right. I've got the message, Heaven, Hell, and the Lake of Fire. And I want you to have it. It's about my true out-of-body experience when I was 18 years old and I was taken into the pit of hell. And I stayed there for two hours. Hell is in the center of this earth. And I want you to get the description of what happened when I went down there and I touched the walls of hell and even people that I knew that was in hell I was trying to pull out. It's so much detail that I just can't share with you right now but I want you to get this and then a year later I was caught up into heaven into the third heaven into Jesus throne room and he instructed me and prophesied to me and told me many great things to come and they have come to pass and finally how God saved me from the lake of fire. So I want you to get your copy of this great DVD today and help keep apostolic television going around the world. Our store address is on the screen right now. You can go there, amen, and pay through PayPal with your credit card, checking account, or whatever, any kind of way you want to pay for it, and we'll ship it out to you within seven days. So get your copy today of Heaven, Hell, and the Lake of Fire, and you will be blessed.